since January, there has been, of course, uh, some corrective action taken uh, on the Court of Common Pleas that we've been made aware of. Uh, I'm wondering, in your opinion, are there other priorities? Are there other things that you see need to be addressed soon? I think we need, I'm, I'm big on checks and balances. I think that the court needs to implement more checks and balances. We do it between our branches of government, and that's how we're, we, we are successful in our government. I think um, the problem is some of these courts are confidential. You know, obviously juvenile court, dependency court, these are closed courts, but there's things you can do. I think we should have statistical reviews. I think they should set up um, a, a panel and where you could preserve confidentiality, redact the names, remove the information, but be able to say, did they have counsel? What was the crime? What was the sentence? Did they, you know, request counsel? Whatever it is. And then you review them every couple months. If we were doing that prior to this, it would have been very clear to to this panel, and the panel could be lay people and court people, whatever that you want to comp, you know, put in there for the body. It would have been really clear that something was way amiss in juvenile court. It, you know, the, you know, the problem back then is would the president and judge have allowed it to happen? Probably not. But you put it in effect now, so it's there, and you have this committee. And I, I three months, six months, you look at what's the best way to get a flavor for if there's a problem in any particular courtroom. It would just be uh, and a thought as a way to watch. We do a lot of watch docking, watch dogging, you know, if there's a, a particular court where, um, and this is across the state, we, we've seen it happen, if there's a judge who's ruling a certain way for some, on a particular issue, we get groups, we'll go in and watch and they'll keep track and then they bring it and we look at it and try to get it to the, the appropriate agency to say what's going on in this county, why is, you know, judge so and so, you know, each time this issue comes up ruling this way. Those closed courts, you need to do it with a panel or some type of structured study that would be set up to protect confidentiality, but at least give us a look. I think um, judges need to have judicial ethics classes. Lawyers, we have to go. Lawyers go, we have to get our CLE credits, our continuing legal, legal education credits. We, um, and I'm always running because I'm right at the new year, I'm like the New Year's Eve getter, you know, and you have to have them by the end of your year or you can't practice. They, your license, you know, you can have to pay a fine, get it. Included in our legal education are ethics credits where we must sit through ethics classes to understand ethical issues that are going on. Judges have none right now that, that I'm aware of and I looked into this. Why not have a mandatory judicial ethics class where, where, where judges have to sit down and deal with this? Now, we can't do that, obviously. We would need that to come from the state, but our county could. Oh, there are agencies that would love to do this. I could, you know, would come in and say, we're going to conduct a seminar on, on judicial ethics regarding, you know, this topic. And, you know, the president judge said, I want my judges there. Can you do it in spurts? Can we do it in, just to, to keep reminding us that, um, it's the highest standard that a judge is held to and they need to, to they shouldn't need a constant reminder but obviously we need it one in our county and, and just make it be there so they look at it and they review it um, and, and again those are just things that that I'm looking you know what we do from here on you know how we correct what was wrong they're trying but you know it's it's going to be obviously a tough road but these are things too that you show the public about openness and transparency in the courtroom we need to open our courtrooms we can't have these secret deals or people thinking there's conferences going on in the judges chambers that's got to stop everything needs to be on record with the stenographer sitting there so there's never those questions you know or those issues that raise an eyebrow so I think that um, we need to have openness and I think and I would in my courtroom, I would just have a standing rule on, on recusal motions. I think lawyers categorically are afraid of recusal motions. You're filing a motion with a judge asking him or her to recuse themselves. You're concerned what the judge's reaction is going to be, if they're going to be offended. I file them. I, I file them in other counties. I've had to file them. And it's a point of making a record. Why should a judge be even intimidated by that? It's open. If there's an issue and you think there's a conflict, bring it out. Let's bring it and don't be frightened as an attorney or as a client. Bring it in. It's something that we welcome. It's part of the courtroom and I would have that as a standing order because that way you get to air it, we look at it, and if there's a problem, you address it and you deal with it up front. And I think that openness needs to come through. I think it needs to be a part of our regular, everyday operating in Luzerne County. And that's just steps to get us back to where there's trust, where the public trusts us again.